Hi everyone, it's Denise with Mona Bar Crafts. I am back today to start a new design team project for Crafty Cat. I am excited about all the things I have planned for this. Um, I did print out the kit and some little extra things that I'm going to put in the journal. And so I just real quick wanted to show you the kit before I get started on the first project. Um, I believe it's 18 pages. Um, I, I did back it with some of my uh, coffee stained, tea stained, um, my own digital kit, just so um, that way I had, I didn't have to use it because even though a lot of people have sent me stuff, I don't want to use it all up in one big journal. So, <laughs> but these, I am so excited because this kit it's so pretty and it's pink and it's red and it's Valentine's and I love it. <laughs> um, I will link her shop. I will link a, uh, a direct link to the digital kit um, in the description block below. So let me just kind of go through it a little bit here. And uh, oh, I think this page and I kind of got them out of order a little bit. <laughs> this page and this page, you can see she's done one for like collage and stuff and one you can put in journal or you can put both of them in the journal same thing with this one it has this cute little cupid on here i think i was going through them and looking at them because they're so pretty <laughs> i cut them all out of order and um like this one has all the little hearts here that you can cut out this one has a cute little cherub um, being pulled or have he has it looks like he's got a, a little dove on a rope and then a little valentine here and I love that she's got reds and pinks and a little bit of a pinky purple in there so you know you've got a lot of different um, pastels there to work with and then this beautiful um, rose trim and she also has in there, there's a page with this lace, and I backed a couple of them with that. So there is that one. And then this one has some cupids. And you guys have probably already seen it if you follow Crafty Cat. It is such a cute little kit, I'm telling you. And then she's got some um, tags and some journaling cards and stuff to play with and some cutouts for some fussy cutting and some trim and a couple little envelope and some, you know, journaling card tucks there. And these ones I backed with um, Caroline Creates, her digital uh, lace coffee dye paper, and it is just beautiful. See? And I'll also leave a link for that down there, too. So, and then she has her Vinegar Valentines, which I'm going to include a couple of those in the journal, just, you know, just for fun. Um, so, and then I'll probably do a project with this as well, just for like a cute little Valentines. I did not back these because they're, they're just cute little cards. You can, I was thinking maybe, uh, they'll probably get glued to something else and if I do want it backed I can always back it with something or just do a cute little stencil but there are five different pages and these are so funny I mean uh, you know the smarty if you were half as smart as you think yourself to be you you'd be a multimillionaire but that takes brains you see <laughs> and the bobbed hair you very much like Samson for when they cut your hair, you lost your whole mentality because all your brains were there. <laughs> and that's funny because I'm going tomorrow to go get all my hair cut off into a bob. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten way too long. My last haircut was, I think, um, I got one done last March. I just had it trimmed up, but I had it cut, cut shorter like not this past christmas time the christmas before and it's already down like below the middle of my back so and i'm just pulling it in ponytail and putting it up in a bun so i'm just like i'm done with it 
I'm not dyeing it anymore. I'm just going to let it go gray. I'm, I'm just, I don't know, <laughs> don't want to fuss with it that much. And then I'm also going to include some of um, Medieval Book Mirages. It's the Illuminated Flora Kit um, because I like the pinks in here, the very pastel -y, and I think they'll go really well in the Valentine's Kit. So this is the portion. Out of, I mean, that kit is huge. There's like 40 pages. And then she also has an add-on, which there's some pieces from the add-on as well. And that one is also huge. But you could probably do like four or five journals with it. But I pulled these matching pieces out to also include, and I backed them also with um, Caroline Creates, her her tea stain, or coffee stain digital. So, on the back of those. So if I want to back them again, I can, but I already there's already some. I kind of like that because I don't have to use up all of my coffee stain. I can actually put that in as a journaling page you know, in my journal. So, and this has some really beautiful tags and plates and little mini, mini tags and cards and flags and all that stuff. So that is what I'm going to be using in this journal. Okay. No, I am not uh, on, I am not part of uh, Medieval Mirages. I do know that Amy loves her stuff and it does, it goes very well with a lot of her things. So I'm going to use it in there. Um, but I'm not, this is a Crafty Cat design team project, so with her kit. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what all is going in it. I haven't done any fussy cutting yet or anything. So I just printed it all and it's in its little container here. But what I do want to do today is start on the cover. And to do that, I'm going to make a little plate like this. I showed this on my, uh, I think on my last the video before last on kind of like what's coming up and stuff and um, I went ahead and on this one I added some brads to it okay this one I'm probably going to keep for another journal um, but I wanted to show you guys the process and how I do this if you guys can see it's got some crackling on it so that's what we're going to play with is crackle paint and you can get different different kinds um, I'm going to just use the one step crackle um, I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was pretty inexpensive. I mean, it was $2.49. So, um, I did talk to the lady in there and she said, this sells out more better than any of her other two-step crackle stuff. And, um, the tutorial I watched and, uh, give me just a second and I'll, I'll find out who it is that I, I, I kind of got the idea from. Okay. It was Dainty Gifts on YouTube. I'll, I'll try to remember to link her um, and how she does. She does like coasters and that's how she transfers her stuff uh, wrinkle free and all that. And she uses a two-step crackle. So if you have two-step crackle, she has a really good tutorial on it. Um, this one I just figured it was one step. I test, like I said, I use this to test it and it's like two-step where the thinner the coat, the smaller the cracks the thicker the coat, the bigger the crack. So this one I did smaller. I think I'm going to do a more medium one on mine. Um, and then I'm going to also use a varnish, which I also got at Hobby Lobby. Um, this one is a, how big is this bottle? It doesn't really say. Oh, uh, 7.8, almost 8 ounces for $8.99. But I got it when they had their Master's Touch 50% off. So I only ended up paying like, you know, $4.50 for the bottle. So, you know, for, for six, almost $7, it's not bad. It'll last me for a while. So what I'm going to do is use a piece of this junk mail. Um, I don't normally get a whole lot of those like fold out ones, but I do get, I've, I've said before, I get tons of credit card offers and I keep opting out, but they keep sending them to me anyway. And so I like the card stock. Um, I'm not real familiar with the chipboard thicknesses yet. So what I did with this one is it's a piece just like this. And I fold, I put like three or four coats of gesso on it. And then I buffed it with a, with just like one of those sanding blocks, you know, for your fingernails and a very fine one and just got it all nice and smooth, rounded the corners. I'll fold it in half and glue it here in a minute. And then I'm going to re-round those two corners that are squared off. Then we're going to apply the napkin 
with the technique that she does have a video on to apply it with water so that you get all the wrinkles out of it so you know you don't get bubbles or wrinkles or anything like that so that's why I have a, a small cookie pan you can use like just a small plate or whatever and a piece of you can use acetate or plastic or whatever you want to on that okay so like I said I took this and I went ahead and and uh, this piece is and as you can see my cutting mat is gone um, I have ruined so many with glue and it really it's intended to cut fabric and so I keep having to flip it back and forth and move it when I want to cut fabric and stuff and the glue on it has ruined my I keep going through blades like crazy so I decided <laughs> that I'm moving my cutting mat where it needs to where it's supposed to be over there next to my machine and then this area I bought some contact paper and I thought well you know I can take it up when it gets all nasty and re just reapply a new piece so I bought a big thick roll of it um, and I, I got it today so I will be applying it probably after after we get done here and I bought a glass mat finally well I say finally but I did buy one before and yeah so this piece is about eight and three quarter almost eight and three quarters long of course you can do it any size you want by five all right, and I'm going to use this napkin, and uh, I got these napkins. I sent one of these to Amy um, a while back. I got them from um, on Etsy, uh, Cherio Tino, Chir Chir Tino. I will leave a link below, so if you guys are curious, she still does have them. I did check. She still has these in her shop. I think you get like four in a pack, so but they're really really pretty because it's got like a more and it's got love and and uh, all that so all I'm gonna do is I haven't peeled off the layers because I want the thickness so I can cut this and I, of course I will cut it it this piece is gonna be a little bit bigger than what I need but and I'll cut it down I just want to cut this piece out because that's all I'm gonna need and you can actually use this same method on chipboard or cardboard, but I would make sure that you reinforce it because it will get a little wet. And, you know, like you said, you, it will get a little bowing, but once you we fold it, it will be nice and thick. It'll be uh, like this. So it's almost like a coaster. It's, so it's, it's fairly thin. I would say it's probably about an eighth of an inch thick. So it'll be a nice little plate for the, uh, for the cover of my journal. So, as you can see, I'm probably going to have to trim down a little bit on this, obviously, this way as well. Um, so, we'll do all that measurement here in a second. So, I think what I want to do, yeah, is just carefully, without making a crease, line it up so that my edges are rounded. I may have to re-round my edges. I hate, that's the only thing about doing thick cardstock is it's kind of hard on my hand when I do it. And then I'm just gently going to fold it in half if you get it there. And it's okay if it cracks a little bit. You can score it if you want, but I'm just going to put varnish over it anyway, so... And then resand it and all that stuff. So not a big deal, because all this will get varnish over it, and then we'll smooth it all out and all that stuff. You can definitely score it if you're worried about it cracking. I am not, because like I said, all that will get smoothed out with a buffer and all that stuff. So, all right. So let me take and round this corner. Stand up. Maybe. Ugh. Yeah, not easy. It's thick. <laughs> Ugh. Ow. <laughs> okay, so now I want to just glue it, and then I'm, of course I'm going to clean up and, and cut the edges, So, because I'm probably going to have to cut it down anyways. 
to fit my napkin. I refilled my ink bottle or my glue bottle because it was getting low and goobery. So added my little fingernail polish remover in there. Got it flowing pretty good. Let's see if I can get it to the edge without it ooping out. Alright, so buff that down a little bit. So how is everyone doing? It is cold. It's like 23 degrees today. And I went to, had to go to Walmart, went to Lowe's and bought yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, so I'm getting a little ahead of myself, sorry. <laughs> Went to Lowe's and bought some shelves and another little, um, like, cubby to put some stuff. I cleaned out, after I got that journal done, I cleaned out and I put all my happy mail away and got everything kind of reorganized and cleaned up, and I can breathe. <laughs> it feels good. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this right here. And just kind of even it up a little bit here. Because I'm going to have to trim a little more when I put the napkin on. Alright. We've got this little edge too. Yeah, so I bought some shelves and, like I said, bought some contact paper for here. And then I bought a glass mat. I had bought one, oh, last, was it last, uh, yeah, last Black, Black Friday. Not this past Black Friday, but the Black Friday before. And I bought it off Etsy during their Black Friday sale and paid for it. It's supposed to have free shipping. I waited, and I waited, and I waited, I waited 30 days, and had a shipping notification, but it never got shipped. In other words, you know, it was, it said it was shipped, but it was never shipped. So then I went to contact the Etsy seller, and they had closed up shop, and I never got my items, so then I notified Etsy, and of course, they say, well, you have to give the, and I sent back a message to Etsy which didn't get answered until that two-week period went by anyway, that said, you know, hey, um, th this Etsy store is closed, so it doesn't matter how much I email a person, they're closed. They're not responding. So I got my money back for it, and I was kind of like put off because, you know, they weren't on sale again, and Amazon just put them back on sale. It was only a couple dollars off, but I said, well... I'm done waiting. I'll just get one. So I went ahead and got that one. It's the Tim Holtz, you know, the black glass one. So that way I can move it if I want. And I still have my contact paper. And it should be able to, I can, don't have to use these anymore. I don't want to. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take my ply off. I know tape works good, but one, and sometimes if you cut the napkin, it kind of already comes apart, so there's two. All right, we'll set these over here to stamp on. All right, shoot. I am going to have to... Come down a little bit on one on on that. So let's see. Pencil, pencil, pencil. All right. 
which side am I on? Okay, yeah. Let me cut on this side. Because, see, you can see the credit card's still there. I'm going to use, I'm going to put it on this side because it's, it's, oh, it doesn't have any markings, but I'm going to mark this end so I can cut. Okay. Oh, that's a pen. Denise. I'm just so excited to be back in the craft room. Yay. And then, so, I could use my cutter for it, but I'm just going to use the scissors. All right, come on. Curve those edges. All right. All right, and then on my sides, I am going to use my water pen to take that edge off. Actually, I probably should do that after I curved my edges, but, you know, it's just a small little bit, and I can, you know, take it under if I want. All right. Okay, so let me re-round my corner here. I'm going to pause to do that because I might be making some funny noises. Okay, so I've got my little piece all rounded here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the napkin over. And I am going to use a piece of plastic. Okay, so you can use acetate, whatever. You can use a... Uh, like a document protector or anything like that. I'm going to use a little bit of water on here and just kind of move it around. Okay, spread it there. And then I'm going to put my napkin on and I'm going to put it on upside down. Okay, because when we transfer, we're going to transfer using the, the plastic so it keeps it from um find my brush here. Right brush. And then I'm just gonna work it out very, very gently. And the water is gonna help keep it from tearing. Okay. Just kind of even it, even it out. Just light lightly pull stretch it out okay so then when, once you see that you kind of got all any air bubbles or anything out of it that you don't want in it obviously okay straighten it out a little bit now I'm going to hold my plastic and I'm just going to let that water drain I haven't done it. I did it this way with the other one and it was really smooth. So hopefully we don't have the same problem. Put some napkin down just so we don't get too much water. And then it holds to the plastic so that I can place it. Why is that longer? Am I in the wrong direction here? I don't think so. I 
there we go. And then just give it a nice smooth out on the plastic. And the plastic helps to protect the napkin so you don't tear it. All right. And then ta-da. <laughs> Now you may get a little bit in here, and this is where now we're going to lay, um, where is my, there it is. And what I did was I watered down some Mod Podge, okay? It's about the consistency of milk. What I want to do is just kind of tuck and kind of pull a little bit very very gently in case you do get a few wrinkles in there I think because I I think I wet the last one I'm not I can't remember if I did or not I mean it's okay with this one I mean if you want a perfectly smooth background just work with it a little bit and then we're gonna you know use a watered down so that that way it soaks through um, the Mod Podge and it'll adhere it to the back side. Just a very light touch. All you need. And you can do it like if you want. You can lay it any way you want. You know, if you're happy with laying down glue on the bottom first, do it. I mean, it'll work that way too. I think I got my brush a little too wet there. And all I'm trying to do is just lay some glue so it soaks through. Because I'm going to put crackle over it. So, you know, to get a flat, perfect napkin, you can, you know, if, if that's what you're going for and you're just going to varnish over it, um, then that's good too. Because you don't have to, you know, you could do this same method and not uh, put any crackle over it. I just happen, I love this napkin. Because <laughs> Amy did it on hers and she was like, man, I love this napkin. I love this napkin too. I figured she would like it. That's why I sent it to her, you know. Um, but this, because it's wet all the way through, and the Mod Podge is watered down a little bit, it'll soak through and it'll glue right to it. So, there we go. And then, of course, the crackle is going to crackle it and make it look old. Okay. And then, my napkin edge, I'm just going to brush down the side very lightly. I'm going to tuck it under there. Got a little something. I think that's what the problem is. I got something stuck on the brush and it's trying to pull at the napkin. But <clears throat> see, like that right there. Oh. Don't mess with it too much, Denise. <laughs> That's why I said it's not. It doesn't really matter if that edge is kind of because the napkin's going to tuck over the top of it a little bit. Okay. Sorry, I'm focusing, focusing, focusing. <laughs> Now I'm going to very, very carefully just 
just kind of pull it down on the back side and it's okay if it tears back here because that's the back end of this going to be it's going to be covered up you know this is what's going to get adhered to the cover And just kind of go around. Make sure I'm in camera here because I did move my camera back a little bit. And that will get, you know, once it dries and we get some other, you know, the crackle on it and stuff, we can um, take that buffer and buff it smooth around the edges again. Okay, so. I think, like I said, I think I got a piece of either a paper towel or something on here because this little edge right here. I mean, it's not really going to matter too much because the crackle is going to go over it. And it's just going to look old anyway. So, what I want to do is let this dry. Takes, if you let it sit and dry, it'll probably take about an hour. I am going to pause and put my little heat tool on there and try and dry it up that way. So, All right, and I will be right back. Okay, so what I did was dried it, and then I put another coat of the watered-down Mod Podge and then let it dry. Now I'm just going to give it a little buff. Okay, just so it's smooth. And my edges here. Uber down there. He's got his little toy and my other little Uber. She keeps trying to steal it from him and he gets mad. It's like, mm, it's mine. <laughs> He's like, you have yours. Go play with yours. Hangnails there, you gotta kind of buffer it off. Okay, so we're nice and smooth. Now we just put the crackle on, and the crackle, like I said, the thinner the coat that you use the smaller the crackle so like this was a very thin coat so as you can see the crackle on it is small I'm going to put a little bit thicker so I'm not going to have it real thick where it's big crackles I just want a medium and this package tells you to let, let it dry um, two to four hours so I what I did with this one was I waited about an hour hour and a half and then I took my heat tool way up high and then just kind of let it air dry, you know, help it dry a little bit faster. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it that way with this one or not. I don't know. So uh, let's see. Get my paintbrush here. And what I did was I just poured it from like the center and then just worked it out from there. Just work it to the edge. And it's okay if you get, you know, a lot on there because you can spread it. You'll be able to spread it out here. Okay. 
just so it's smooth. And yeah, even, you know, try to get it as evenly covered as possible. So that it fills in those little grooves. That's why I tried to smooth it out a little bit so that it, it doesn't have as much. A little bit more there. To, um, you know, because it's going to fill in all those little um, brush marks and stroke marks you had from the Mod Podge over the top of it. So, and then that's kind of thin right there on that edge. Slow down a little bit. it's all covered it's okay if you get some stroke marks in them because it will it'll smooth out as you go through so hold on to it and it is sticky so if you get it on your fingers it's okay it washes off with soap and water it is a little sticky though around the edges here get any excess that's hanging off that uh, maybe I don't see yeah. and just play with it a little bit you know I mean Yeah, I think the reason why I had that little thing I when I looked at my Mod Podge, because I normally have I have a bigger jar of it. I just didn't I was too lazy to pull it out. <laughs> so I used the little container there and um it uh it's already starting to crackle on me. Um I guess it had been in the cabinet for a bit because it was a little bit of stringy stuff coming out of it. And I think that is, I'm going to put a little bit on this edge here because I want it a little bit thicker because I don't want too small cracks there. Smooth it in there. There we go. Alright, so then all I'm going to do is let it sit and dry. I'll have to pause the video. and uh, Actually, I think I'll end this video and then I'll attach the next part because it's going to have to sit and dry for a few hours. And then we'll have to put a gloss. I'm going to put a gloss varnish. You can get matte varnish. If you don't want a higher gloss, this does this stuff didn't give an ultra. It gave it, it was quite shiny. And so what I did was I just buffed it to kind of dull down the shininess of it. But if you like it really high shiny, um, there's, well, I think there's like a higher gloss in this. Then there's gloss, then there's matte, you know, it's just no different from Mod Podge. Some people I have heard. Okay, they use the crackle and then they'll use Mod Podge over the top if you don't want to use a gar uh, varnish because it dries clear as well. So you can do the same thing. So I think um, I am going to, um, I'll attach, I'll, I'll come back and, and add, I'll clip the videos together only because this is going to take a couple hours to dry. So I will be back here in a little bit. Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, so it's been about two hours and I let about the hour and a half mode. I did put a little bit of heat way up high from it. Um, it appears, and I don't know if you can see, let's see if we can get focused or not, but it is cracked. The crackling wasn't as big as what I thought it was going to be. It's bigger than the other one, but not quite as big, but that's okay because I kind of like it. 
So what I'm going to do now is um, poke my holes for my brads. Now you can do this after you varnish if you want. I did it with these, but I figure I'll go ahead and do it now. Um, and then that way, hopefully, the varnish will go in there. So I'm just going to take and see if I can get whatever's in there out. There we go. Um, and put some little holes in the corners here to add some brads. Like I said, it took... Um, go and check out her video because she does the two-step. I've done the two-step long time ago. Um, like, you know, doing kind of like a stained glass kind of thing before on a project. I've never done the one-step. Um, I kind of like it, but apparently, you know, you're going to have to play with it and see. Obviously, I, I thought I had it thicker, which I did have it thicker. It just, I guess you got to use a lot more <laughs> to get the bigger cracks on it. So, anyways, what I want to do is I want to brush over to make those cracks accentuate. I'm going to use like this, this Perlex powdered pigment. Um, I do know that like Tim Holtz carries a line of pigments and stuff like that. This one I got, um, our Hobby Lobby, because it's the closest craft store, it's the one I use most frequently is starting to kind of pull back from a lot of the Tim Holtz stuff. I don't know why. I don't know if that's um, their idea or Tim Holtz's and, and Ranger's idea or what, but I went ahead and got this at Hobby Lobby. It was 25 bucks, but you get quite a bit. You don't need a lot. And um, from what I understand, you can also use soft pastels. So if you have those, you can do it as well. So what I want to do is use a light pink, and then I think I want to use like an antique bronze on here to kind of give it an aged, almost like a vintage photo look. Uh, let me see, is that the right color? Oh, that's mink. I don't want that one. I think it's supposed to go up there. Is this the antique? Yeah, antique bronze on there. And you can use paper towel. You can use, um, I'm just going to use a soft brush. Uh, you can use your finger, rub it in, which I'll use a little. I'll put the brush on, and then I use my finger to rub it on. And then you can use like a paper towel, toilet paper, soft cloth to kind of wipe it off. So... What I'm going to do is kind of go around kind of in an oval in the bronze here. And as you can see now, the cracks are really showing up, huh? <laughs> I just think this is the neatest thing to do. I'm just going to work it outward because that's where I want my color for that bronze to stay. You know, but look at that. Isn't that cool? How it just shows the cracks. It gets in that groove in there. Pick some of this up. It's not what not, right? Kind of give it a hopefully a little soft edge here. Okay. And then <clears throat> pick up the rest of this. Pull this out without. There we go. Because it's so expensive, <laughs> I don't want to waste it if I can help it. Okay. And 
course, I'll probably have shimmery stuff all over me now. <laughs> um, and then, I think, let's see. So let me work it in a little bit with paper towel. I just think that is so cool how it, it, it makes the cracks just stand out the way it does. Just kind of rub it in there so it, it kind of gets in those grooves. I mean, you could literally just leave it like that. Isn't that neat? Like that, but what I'm going to do is put a little bit of this pink gold in here. So it's kind of like a more rosy than it is gold. <laughs> I'm going to use what's off the cap first. in a circular pattern so it's going to take out some of that white and fill in so it's not so bright white and then just blend it to the edges of that bronze get those cracks to show up there. I just love it. <laughs> But I am going to use this as a little plate for the front of the book cover. And then we'll decorate and do some other fun stuff. And kind of get a little shabby, shabby chic with it. I know some people don't like the shabby chic and they're into more, you know, of the boho thing. And, and that's okay, too. Just kind of trying to blend both these colors kind of together. All right. Let's pitch the top. Don't need the top. I just love this. I it, I seen it done like I said on those coasters and I just thought, "Oh my gosh." That will look so cute on a cover. So now we're just going to use the paper towel to kind of wipe off the excess and get the rest of it kind of down in the, in the grooves. But you could see how like smaller cracks, larger cracks, you know, it can, it can really make a huge difference in there. So. Use my finger and just make sure I don't have any lumps or bumps. And there we go. It's kind of cool, huh? So, and then let's see if we can kind of blend some of this color in a little bit because it looks like it's a little darker in some spots.
And it could just be because the crackling went smaller there, which is fine. I kind of like it. It looks very aged. Okay, so now that we've got our our cracks all filled in and, and the dimensions, now we're ready to varnish. And that is the same process as putting the crackle on. We're just going to put it over the top and then let it dry. That normally takes, I let it dry overnight. So, you know, once I get it on, it'll be like an overnight thing. And then my next video, I'm going to start on the cover, but I'll go back and show you guys what it looks like when it's all said and done. So if you're going to do the varnish, I would leave it overnight to, um, it's, it normally only takes a couple hours. It's like the crackle, but just to make sure I left mine overnight and it and it came out really nice. So, all right, same thing here. We're just gonna put this over the top, and this varnish does come out and it looks a lot like Mod Podge. That's why I said you could probably use Mod Podge um, to cover over the top of it if you so chose um, to varnish it. You could use uh, the glossy or the, um, you know, the matte, if you wanted it more matte. This is a gloss. I want a little bit of a shine on it. Not too much. If it gets too shiny, I'll buff it down a little bit and kind of age it a little bit, I think. So. But I want this varnish to kind of get down in those holes I poked my holes after, but I kind of want the varnish to kind of go down in there. And if you get extra, it's okay. Just brush it off into your your brush's water dish. Because this is, make sure that you get varnish that's water soluble. So, That's all I'm doing, just back and forth, taking the excess off. You can go another direction if you want. You can put another layer of varnish on there if you like. Totally up to you if you don't think it's thick enough or, you know. But I let, like I said, I left this overnight. Sorry, we got, it's later in the evening. We got some helicopters up from the Army base, which they come up from time to time to do training and stuff. So they are here. If you hear them in the background, that is why. All right, let me just poke that in there. All right, so then I'm just going to leave it to dry overnight. And then in my next video, I will show you guys what, because all I'm going to do is let it dry. I'm going to add my brads, um, buff it down if I need to. I'll, I'll show you that in the next video before we get started on the cover. So I hope you guys had fun and and, you know, you guys will give it a try if you don't already or you haven't done something like this before. This is, like I said, I've done the crackle before um, with uh, the two-step. But what's on there? Something on there. Uh-oh. Okay, what do we get on there? Something got on there. <laughs> it flung on there. Okay. Not a biggie. Have a brush we can fix. And like I said, it's just a varnish. So, you know, if it looks like if you're worried about 
uh, brush strokes. You can buff it down once it dries and lay it another way. Um, and try and fill in the brush strokes if you want. Totally up to you, however you want to go. I'm kind of wanting it to give like that antique look, so I'm okay if there's a few brush marks. I can brush it down. I can buff it down if it's too shiny. So I'm just going to set this on the paper overnight to dry, and then um, I may come back and start uh, my next video on my cover, and then once this is dry, I'll show you guys. We'll come back to it and show you guys how it looks when it's all done. All right. So until next time, guys, plenty of hugs, loves, and blessings. Mwah. Hope you had fun.